you know the term the expression stay in your own lane my wonderful guest and i we're about to take that shiz to the next level it is about to get personal okay i have with me riley gaines barker I reposted an op-ed that Riley wrote. It was posted in Fox News yesterday. And if you are already triggered, okay, just calm down. You're good. You're good. By Fox News, like, you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I promise. Okay. Because this is a conversation that is so important, that is so worth having, that I've been having here on Cancel Me Baby. And we have a real life subject in the mix here with us today. So a little bit about Riley, Okay. She is a 12-time NCAA All-American, five-time SEC champion and record holder in women's swimming. Okay, keep up. Keep up. I know it's early on a Friday, but you got this, okay? Two-time Olympic trial qualifier, and she competed at University of Kentucky. And the reason that I reposted her story is because as a woman, it was extremely cathartic. It was somewhat shocking. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to talk about that um, because Riley competed and tied against the trans woman swimmer, Leah Thomas. Um, so we are going to talk all about that today. Riley, he, my girl here in Nashville, both of us, who knew? Here we are. Thank you for joining us on Cancel Me Baby today. And by the way, if anyone has a problem with any of this, I just have that to say. Okay. So cheers and welcome to the show. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, the way you describe me makes me seem a lot cooler than I really am. <laughs> so thank you. Listen, you are cool. You are a cool <laughs> chick and we're going to talk all about your op-ed and why it resonated with me. And I have to tell you, Riley, we are in such a divided time clearly, but I posted your story and I'll tell you, I had women and people from all sides of the aisle and all walks of life being like, yes, bitch. Right. Yes. Right. I think oh. that's what makes this topic so special um, and so important is because it really, you know, like you said, there's so many things across the country that are so divisive, but this is a topic that 95% of the country agrees on, which is pretty rare nowadays. So thank you. And the thing that's sad is that at face value, people will look at you like you're the woman who Trump invited on stage at CPAC, the whole thing where the media was like, oh, he was trying to kiss her and she dodged it. And just being associated with him, right? And being on stage with him, that at face value is going to put you in a camp and it's going to have people judge you and write you off as some like lunatic, right? As some right wing. And it's so sad because this is like I said an issue that it's a it's a women's issue and it's, it shouldn't matter even it shouldn't even be about sides or what sides you're on and that's why like I said it resonates with so many women no matter where no matter where you fall you know exactly yeah you hit the nail on the head um which is something I've been facing these past couple months you know there's so many comments saying oh, you only do right-wing media, you align yourself with Trump and Tucker Carlson and all these people, but I'm aligning myself with people who are willing to talk about this issue and who are willing to make a change. So if that happens to be right-wing people, fantastic, I'm on board, so. Well, here at Cancel Me Baby, you are welcome. I allow all voices and I, I, I'll take my shots every now and then at, at Tuck's at the Tucker and, and the Trumpster too. So, so oh, no, yeah. nobody's safe. But with that being <laughs> said, um, you talk about title nine, um, and the fact that Biden is, uh, you know, again, the fact that this has all become political is something in and of itself. Right. But that basically like he has wiped the crust out of his eyes, maybe, and like, isn't actually having the backs of women. And for what, for me, like what struck me so much about your story, I'm, I'm telling you, Riley, it moved me to tears almost, is you talk about that moment, okay? Tying with Leah Thomas, no matter how you want to slice it, a biological male transitioned, however you want to say it, competing in women's sports. So already has the physicality and that advantage over a woman, right? You tie her. And what happens, but she is given the trophy, all the photo ops, proceeds to be named NCAA Woman of the Year. 
after all, like right. to me, what a blow to your grit, your sacrifice, right? right. Talk to me right. about, like, bring us into that moment. Right. So exactly like you said, we tied. Um, this was actually the day after I watched Thomas win a national title. Um, so Thomas won the 500 freestyle, beat out all the women by a landslide. So I would say this was the second day when we competed in Tide. And so after that first day watching that, you know, the mood was totally shifted across the entire pool deck. People were frustrated. People were mad that, you know, we're losing opportunities as women to someone who just swam three years on the men's side at UPenn. This is insane, but still no one was really being vocal about it. And so that next day we raced, we tied which is, like I said, rare. Um, they don't really account for ties in swimming because it's measured to the hundredth of a second. So to touch at the exact same time is kind of crazy. And so we go behind the awards podium where they're distributing the trophies and the official looks at me and was like, great job. Um, you know, we don't account for ties, so we only have one trophy. So we're going to give that to Thomas. Um, yours will eventually come in the mail. Don't worry about it. Uh, and so I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, I understand you only have one but can I ask you why you're adamant on giving this trophy to Thomas? And he was like, oh, well, we're just doing this in chronological order. And so I'm sitting there at this point, I realize what's happening and I'm like, okay, well, what are we being chronological about? Because mm -hmm. as I said before, we tied. Um, and he looked at me and said, for photo purposes, Thomas has to hold the trophy. You can pose with the sixth place trophy, but we're going to take it back from you and yours will just come in the mail. And so after this instance, I was done waiting for someone to speak out because up until then, you know, I thought a coach, I thought someone within some political power, um, someone within some sort of administration with power to change these guidelines would stick up for women. But that was not what we were seeing. And so after this scenario, I told myself, you know, it's going to have to be me that speaks out because I'm sick of waiting for someone else to do it. Did you get your very like methodical about it and I like that you're like okay well listen no one's gonna do it and so here I am but did it get emotional for you like it got emotional for me reading your story yeah. you talk about like why did I go at 4 30 in the morning to practice swimming every day why did I kill myself doing this and that right just to be so deflated and defeated like did you cry like take me into even like that night right like yeah. the after effects it was more so of just this shock. Like I was really in utter shock of how this was unfolding and how people were treating it. I truly thought because no one was saying something, I thought I was missing something. It's like, is there something here I'm not getting? It is like, I'm clearly missing a piece of this story if, you know, we're all sitting back on this. And so, yes, it was so emotional, especially, mm -hmm. you know, after speaking out. I'm talking to so many amazing female athletes who are older, who didn't have title nine when they were younger and who had to fight to get it. So they know mm -hmm. what unequal opportunities look like. And, and so hearing stories from them, yeah. oh my gosh, it makes me realize how much I took for granted title nine up until this experience. Um, you know, it was just 50 years ago it was created. And so it's not that, that long ago. And I think people are forgetting that, you know, I think people think transgenders are historically oppressed, which I'm not saying isn't true, but women are historically oppressed. Why are we now only 50 years after this was created trying to totally take it away and do a 180? And so being in my position and hearing from these athletes who fought to get here um, and hearing from parents who have young daughters who don't want to face this, it's so emotional. And I think that's a piece that a lot of people don't really see, mm -hmm. um, but it is, it's, it pulls your heartstrings. So before we get into, we're going to have a little locker room talk here yeah. on K, if you know what I mean. Okay. But before we get to that, you hit something on the head that I was going to get to. And I don't know, Riley, if you have heard of the term woke amnesia, and it's a term that I made up here on this show because I experienced it firsthand. Right. And first things first, like, I do want to say this, here's the thing. It's like, I don't understand why both things can't be true. I don't understand why we can't advocate for women in their lanes. I talk about, you know, literal and metaphorical lanes and trans um, people to be in their lane and to be acknowledged and respected as they should as well. Like I fully support both. And I've said this before, like I have interviewed and been in the presence of some of the most prominent trans women 
in the world and entertainment, like literally might as well have been motorboating both of them. One is Gigi Gorgeous, famous YouTuber. <laughs> One is none other how fitting than Caitlyn Jenner. Right. Okay. And let me tell you, like standing next to her, I, she would blow me away like the ant that I am. Okay. Like I am not trying to compete with her in any way, shape or form, which she has said. Right. So I fully acknowledge and support if somebody like deep, deep down resonates with another gender, I can, I like, I don't know about you, but I can totally respect sure. and acknowledge that. However, sure. this is where it comes down to drawing a line, sportsmanship, right? And what right. makes sense, right? What is common sense? For so, sure. Right. So with woke amnesia, being as someone, I was a red carpet reporter and I was Riley in the mix, in the pep squad, like on the front line for all of the things that woke Hollywood love to rally behind, right? Like the Women's March, Pussy Power, all of these conferences that were women only. Meanwhile, I was like, where are all the men in here? Like, shouldn't they be the ones you guys are talking to, right? So they love this idea of like, you know, we're under the thumb of the patriarchy. We need to rise above, which I don't even agree with all that. That's another ball of wax. However, in the same breath, these are the same people, right? Who look at your situation, who like advocate for this blindly and let this slide. And I'm not saying it's taking opportunity from a woman and giving it to a man, but get, taking it away from biological women to who your point have been historically not given equal opportunity as men. So where is the outrage? Where is even the questioning? That to me is the hypocrisy that blows my mind. You're so correct. And that's, you know, one of the, when I first initially spoke out, I thought for sure there will be these feminist organizations who back me, um, who are understanding, who see women are losing scholarships, we're losing titles, we're losing opportunities to exactly like you said, any way you want to slice it up, a biological guy. But that's not what we saw. You know, these organizations, the hashtag Me Too movement, it's like it just never happened. Um, especially in this instance where we're seeing, we're hearing from female athletes who are discriminated against by the NCAA, by men competing in women's sports, and you don't hear a peep. So what's interesting is, again, being in, with these high profile, um, you know, influential people in Hollywood, they love terms like, again, like I said, smash the patriarchy, break the glass ceiling, um, male gaze, don't be misogynist. And something that struck me in your piece is you're like, what's happening here is outright misogynistic. Expand right. on that. Well, I think, you know, people look at it as I've been called transphobic a, a number of times, but exactly like you said earlier, People nowadays, I feel like majority of people don't care how you identify. People are so wrapped up in themselves. You know, we live in such a selfish world. No one cares what other people do unless it starts to affect them. And in this scenario where we're racing and competing against, you know, a biological male, you said it, a, a line has to be drawn in the workplace, in relationships. Um, there's so many different aspects of life that don't you know, look to biology. Um, but sports is not one of those things. It doesn't care how you feel. It doesn't care how you identify. It's directly related to, you know, your anatomy, your physiology, and all these things that you can't change no matter how many uh, testosterone suppression or different things you're on. There are certain things that will never change. And so by allowing men to compete with women, it's misogynistic. And to deny that, you know, you're denying logic, you're denying science, you're denying reason. There's so many different pieces that you're failing to look at because you're choosing to look at someone's feelings. And it's so much more than that. And it's, you know, misogynistic in a sense of almost, you know, putting down women like yourself, whether it be shutting you up, shutting out competition, right? And on top of it being like, sorry, you have to swallow it and eat it, like, you're in the wrong here, right? right? After everything, like we said that we fought for. And even the way that it doesn't make any sense, you talk about logic, right? And I even bring up the joke of woke amnesia. Like I remember being, I was a writer at VH1 in New York City when Caitlyn Jenner, one of the most famous athletes in history, 
came out as trans and was on the cover of Vanity Fair. And it was like this whole big deal. And they were applauding it. Right. Like they it was like the best thing since sliced bread. I know because I talked to celebrities on the red carpet about it at the time and cut to now. She has been in your corner. Like it doesn't get any more of an authority figure on the matter. Right. Than Caitlyn Jenner. She has even acknowledged this isn't fair. Yet somehow like you, I assume we're going to talk about the backlash. She has gotten backlash. Like how, how is she transphobic? I have to, how does it work? Right. And that's the thing is people don't have a rebuttal. There's no other rebuttal um, than, oh, well, you just don't like trans people. That is not the case. <laughs> that is not what I'm arguing about here. It's not the fact that Leah Thomas is transgender because guess what? We had another transgender at that same meet transitioning the other way. So technically was a biological female who went by he, him, um, his name is Isaac now, but was swimming with the females. And you don't hear me saying a word about that because this is a female swimming with the females. And so the media has done a terrible job covering that piece, but you're exactly right. It's just people who don't have another way to find a way to make their argument relevant. And it's just not, it's not, that's not what this boils down to. And Caitlyn Jenner is a perfect spokesperson because being an athlete, Caitlyn knows what it takes to be elite. I actually watched a documentary on Caitlyn Jenner and talking about her workout schedule, the intensity of the training. Oh my gosh. So she gets it. She understands there are differences that can never be overcome between male and female, regardless of how much you train. You talk about logic. Like I have, when I've spoken up about this, people have come after me on Instagram saying things like, like this kooky kind of fantasy like Looney Tune unicorn world where I'm like, how does this make any sense? They'll be like, it's all, you know, sex and gender. They conflate the two as if they're both some societal construct that we've made up. And that's where it has to be like, listen, I know that there are nuances. Like you say in your piece, there are two sexes and I could see where that would get you in trouble. But is there a part to where it's like, listen, we can acknowledge maybe there is some sort of spectrum. Maybe you are born into this shell, but really deep down in your soul, you feel like this. But at the base of it, are there two sexes, whereas gender is more societal? Like, why are we conflating the two as if they're this whole big mishmash made up societal thing, right? Like, that's where exactly. it gets exactly. confusing. Exactly. There are two sexes. You have eggs or you have sperm. It's that simple. And obviously, there are the anomalies of um, diagnosed sex disorders, intersex but that's intersex. not what we're talking about here that's definitely more of a case-by-case -case situation that's not in the question here that's a totally different scenario and I think that's a different topic to be had but there are two sexes male and female exactly like you said there can be some sort of spectrum on where you think you fall in terms of your identity but what your body tells you you are you cannot change that just because you are standing up for your experience for everything women who have historically not been given equal opportunity you're standing up for that transphobic like I think Bill Maher said this once like why is that the automatic label like I am not afraid of a trans person again like I will motorboat C Caitlyn Jenner again tomorrow like in or out of a pool like I don't <laughs> care right but like why why is it like I'm afraid of you I'm not afraid of you but I want what's right, right? Like, have you been labeled that and That's have you been exactly. getting backlash? Honestly, I really haven't received that much backlash in terms of what I've received support. Oh my okay. gosh, the support I've received is tenfold anything negative. But I will say the negative comments I've received are either you're transphobic, which exactly like you said, I'm not. I, do we know what phobia means? It's the fear of. And I'm, I don't fear trans people. That's not the problem. So it's either you're transphobic um, you're bad at swimming. You should have just worked harder. I'm not bad at swimming. Um, I think to finish fifth in the entire country out of every swimmer in the country is a huge accomplishment. Um, I have a rap sheet, you know, of all my things I've accomplished. That's just not true. Or you're ugly, which I also don't think is true. So it's just three things that are so surface level because there's nothing else they can say. There's no science they can bring. Um, that can dispute what I'm saying. Uh, what so many people, what scientists, you know, all these people are saying, so they resort to you're ugly, you're bad at swimming or you're transphobic. <laughs> and it's sad because 
again, it's like what we were saying earlier of people, the hypocrisy, it's like, they don't know what they want because in the same breath, they talk about like the struggle of women and being suppressed and all these things. Yet here we go, handing away our, our rights that we fought for, which by the way, how entitled, like try, I say this all the time on my show, but try going to other countries that don't have the <laughs> the rights and the luxuries that we have that we stand you know we stand on the shoulders of women and before this, us thanks to them right that right there drives me insane people think we live in this place where you know gay people are oppressed and transgenders and all these different minority groups are oppressed i want to look at them and say go anywhere else and see how it pans out because i guarantee mm -hmm. you you don't realize how fortunate you are in this country but like you said in the beginning there are divisive pieces pushed. There's agendas pushed and the media, how it portrays different things makes people think that they're being oppressed or that, you know, there's all these different connotations, but in reality, America is so fantastic for that reason. It really is like a huge blending pot. Um, I think that's something that drives me so crazy about LeBron James is he talks about how terrible America is. Mm -hmm. I would love to see for LeBron James try to pursue his career and what he's accomplished in America anywhere else um, and see see how that works out for him. I have talked about that myself and how it leaves such a bad taste because it's like, yes, I'm not downplaying aspects of your experience that I'll never know, but at the surface, like the optics of such a wealthy privileged guy, literally living the American dream, making a fortune, having all the resources in the world from, you know, doing something he loves a passion and playing a sport. Like, you know, as a, even me as a journalist, like <laughs> try going to other countries yeah. and writing freely about what's happening or what like you you get jailed you get shot you get and, and back to the woman thing uh, hello there are countries where women can't even show their faces like let's just exactly. talk about that right and here i am tits out here you are you know vocal about what you have to say how lucky we are right exactly. and yet again that's what boils my blood is that let's just again in the same breath hand it, you know, hand it all away. And I don't, I don't understand that, you know, no. even like on a pop culture level, right. I was in playboy in a feature. I'm very proud of that. I spearheaded that brought together everything women are about like intelligence and beauty and brains and body and bringing together the power of all that. Yeah. Now I see men, I'm not talking trans this, that I'm talking that like, I see men in bunny costumes in playboy. And I'm like, Playboy was about liberating women because again, we weren't prior, we were not liberated to be as sexual and be as free and vocal as men. And so let's just give it right back to them after everything that we yeah. like, leave it for us. Some things this. just leave it for yeah. us. Why does everything have to be for everybody all the time? Why does it have to be like, you get this trophy, you get this, or your feelings are hurt or this? No. And that's the thing is I think people look at this as progressive, you know, we're working towards something, but it is so regressive. Yeah. We're completely going a 180 from everything we've accomplished, you know, especially in this, in this deck, I mean, this past decade alone, you know, if you think about five years ago, even a year ago, having a six, four male with male parts in the locker room with a female, that would have been sexual harassment. And now we're praising it. After this, we're nominating this person for woman of the year, instead of like woman of the year. It's insane. It is not progressive. It is the total opposite. So you brought up the locker room and that was another part of your story that really struck a chord for me yeah. is listen, you're exactly right. And even in real life, right? Like I, I used to go recently to LA fitness and they have a men's locker room and a women's locker room, again, a whole other issue, but in the women's locker room, they would have a sign sometimes. And it would say men working in here, you know, to give you a heads up that says it all right. Because as a woman, do you want to be changing? I'm sorry. I don't feel comfortable changing in front of men who would be, or biological men, right, who would be attracted 
to me. I'm changing. They could literally get a boner, be turned on by me, right? That right. is not okay for women. So talk to me about your experience with that because you say you are basically subjected to changing in front of this person, seeing unwillingly like their genitalia. Talk to me about that. Right. So we were not forewarned in any way. We knew we would be competing with Thomas. Um, the NCAA announced that probably two weeks before the meet, but we had no idea what the locker room situation would be like, but this is an all females meet. So historically at every other NCAA championships, there's only female locker rooms because there's only females there. So they convert the male locker rooms to a changing space for girls. And you don't have to worry about men coming in and out because it's only for women. So we were not forewarned at all. Um, and, you know, the locker room at these big meets uh, with all the elite athletes, it's so fun. It's a place where you get to connect with girls you haven't seen in a really long time. You miss your old teammates, you know, things people across the country to reconnect again. And so typically it's a place of just buzzing chatter. Um, and it's so much fun. Um, and you're able to just be vulnerable, especially being swimmers. You're totally used to being half naked all the time as it is. And so I can't say it's a modest place. You know, girls are just walking around totally naked because you feel comfortable doing that. And so we're in locker room changing, super chattery, everyone's loud. And all of a sudden it gets silent. So I have my back turned towards me, um, or turned, turned towards the room. And so I turn around after it gets quiet. And I see someone who is towering over everyone else in the room. And I finally, I realize, you know, like, oh my gosh, we have to share a changing space with, you know, and a, a biological guy. And at this point, we, no one knew what was going on down there, um, anything like that. But I can confirm that Leah Thomas has not gone through any sexual reassignment surgery and still likes girls. And so how uncomfortable and how wrong to be placed in a situation as a female where you're forced to undress in front of a guy completely naked and be exposed to male genitalia. Um, and again, this is nothing to do with the fact that Leah Thomas is a transgender. This is to do with the fact that we were exposed to a guy and a guy who had male parts is undressing in front of females. Um, and in a sport like swimming, you you have to change multiple times and putting on those knee skins is what they're called. It takes like 15 minutes because they're skin tight. So you're completely naked for long periods of time. Wow. I'm sure so many people listening to that and women, you can't help but feel it's jarring, right? And right. and again, it's what we said earlier, like saying something for what it is, like taking emotions maybe out of it. And I'm trying to see both sides here. And I'm like, listen, if right. somebody is a trans person and they're lost in the sauce of like, where do I fit in? And that struggle and not feeling accepted. Like, again, we can separate and the two things can be true. Like I can exactly. acknowledge um, and have empathy for that experience. Right. Exactly. But and also so your experience. I mean, I'm, I'll never forget. I was at my side hustle job. Uh, we'll leave that up to interpretation um, a couple months ago. And I was at the front counter and there was a man who have you heard of like a flasher? Like they literally will just like flash you to get your <laughs> reaction okay <laughs> like it sounds silly and I'm someone who can like it, people know who listen to my show can write this stuff off with like right. a grain of salt and laugh at it right but he was sitting and flashed like literally just had his whole the whole cock and balls yeah. like all out and you could tell he, I was like I got a colleague I'm like do you see that or am I crazy you could see he was like trying to get a reaction out of me and I have to tell you I felt like no touching no verbal no nothing and I felt so violated. Right. It's, I was it's, like, what just happened? It's a violating feeling. You just feel exposed. Um, and I'm not saying that Leah was, you know, going around swinging. Like, sure. it wasn't like that. It sure. wasn't like there was over exploitation. But even in that sense, yeah. you still feel like there is. Um, and there wasn't. And so I don't want anyone to think, you know, like sure. Leah's like, trying to make people feel uncomfortable. I don't think that was Leah's intention. Sure, sure. Really Two don't. totally different things. Yes. Right. But that's how we felt. That's how yeah. I felt. It's how my teammates felt. It's how people across the country at this meet felt. Yeah. 
I mean, listen, I love how you describe, I think that says it all, like how far women have come in opportunity in sports and liberation. You're like, we'll walk around the locker room, like with our boobs out this or that. Like, I think that says it all. Right. And that's so, um, that's so cool. And what you're saying, a sliver into your experience is like on the other end of it, let's be real. Like I don't even, again, <laughs> was him playboy loved every minute of it. Right. But in real life, like I, I, I don't even feel comfortable Riley changing, like in a women's store fitting room. I have to make sure the little curtains right. are drawn. Right. Because it's like, it's my, it's, it's up to me to, to, to what I see, to who experiences this, right. Like that is up to me. And, and that's exactly. where I think to your point, what you experience is a form of misogyny because it's like, we're not going to warn you. We're not going to, you know, respect the space of a woman that you guys have fought for. And on top of it, you kind of have to just like deal with it too right. bad. Right. The Ivy league actually sent out an email to their swimmers that said, you know, if, if you feel comfortable seeing male genitalia in your locker room, here are some resources for you. So not any sort of acknowledgement of <laughs> women's space, that being a safe space. It said, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. If that's for some reason, some weird reason makes you uncomfortable, here's someone you can talk to. And you know what the sad thing is, Riley, when I read your piece, when I thought about this on the whole, the sad thing is it's such a, to your point, it's such a force. Like you have to do this because it's politically correct because it's making, and that's the thing too. It's like the battle of like the formerly oppressed, right? It's like the battle first. It was like, you know, women, we, it's not a, even about equality anymore. It's like women, we supersede men now. Sorry. Like we're gonna just eradicate. We don't need no man and buy. And now it's like you're trans with women, right? It's like, you know, it's like the battle of it's, it's crazy again, like both things can't individually like, you know, have healthy I, competition and live exactly. and be true, but oh, I'm sorry. Go and ahead. I think, I think if this was something that was like a lateral movement, I'll say, so say Thomas was in the five hundreds as a guy, which is what Thomas was. And then, you know, laterally after transitioning was five hundreds as a female there would be no argument because it's not that we're trying to exclude transgenders, but to go from, you know, ranking in the five hundreds in the country to winning a national title that next year, how can we dispute that? How can we not acknowledge that some sort of advantage is playing a role right. in that huge jump? And I think people also undermine winning being the fastest in the country. That's what we're talking about is the fastest swimmer in the country as a female. Um, and so I just think that's worth mentioning is this is not lateral. And if it were to be, it would be a totally different conversation, but it's not, that's not what has happened. And because of what you're saying, it has had the opposite effect instead of acceptance moving forward in a way that makes sense forcing it like this and doing things that are either counterintuitive or violating to women or going backwards or don't make sense makes people resent it. It's like, it's exactly the opposite outcome of what in theory we should want, like acceptance exactly. and understanding. Instead, it makes people resentful and annoyed and angry and frustrated and how exactly. did that's what I wish that they would wrap their heads around? Like, how does this, whether it's someone like the individual, right? Again, sportsmanship, right. whether it's like an organization like the NCAA, right? It's right. going against the outcome that they want, I think. No, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It does create, which we've said multiple times, this divisive divide that doesn't need to be there and that would not be there had these things not occurred in the light that they have. And the sad thing is, Riley, you're seeing it happen. I don't know about in sports, but you're seeing it happen within the community. I mean, look at the Dave Chappelle thing. Like he did a whole skit that had the back of his, you know, singing the praises of his late trans woman friend. And there were walkouts at Netflix, at this, at that people going against trans within trans within the own trans community undercutting bullying all this and it's just a mess like again how does that make sense for what like to what end right right no exactly it doesn't make sense i'm still trying to wrap my head around it and i've been 
throughout this whole experience, I have tried to keep an open mind. Um, I feel like that's something I've actually done a pretty good job of, despite, you know, what people might see on the media is that I want to understand every perspective. I want to see, you know, everything that way I can form my own opinion, because there are certain things on both sides, now that this is a political issue, that I agree with and don't agree with and things like that. And so I've tried to maintain an open mind. And I've still come to the conclusion that, you know, I, I just don't understand. Like you're saying, it just doesn't make sense to me, the other side of this argument. Let me ask you this before we wrap. Um, where is the energy or lack thereof? I mean, you 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 brought it up kind of before, but like of tran- like women who have transitioned to a man and compete like tumbleweed I just need to know like where where is that and why is that not all the rage the buzz and imagine like if a biological woman were to compete uh, yes and transition to a man to compete with biological men like how would that unfold well we're not hearing any stories of that and there's a obvious reason of course that people are choosing to ignore as to why biological women cannot compete with men and it's because they're not in my sport they're not fast enough not even nearly um the times to compete at an elite level for a guy are just a woman could not reach those times the fastest woman you know katie ledecky who's world record holder multiple times would never be able to compete even among the top 100 guys Mm -hmm. um and she's an outlier so these things we're not seeing men or i guess females biological females compete with men um it's all stories of men competing with women and there's an obvious reason as to why that is um but to answer your question where is everyone where are the females you know we can't sit back and expect a change to be made if we're not willing to speak up and i think there are so many people especially in my position um, being young, being an athlete, you know, they're threatened, they're intimidated, they're told, you know, you'll never get a job if you speak out, you won't be able to get into grad school, you'll lose your scholarship. And so people are just pawning it off. You know, they think maybe if we kind of brush this under the rug, it will stop happening. But that's not what I'm seeing. It's rampant. It's underreported at that. Um, it's happening across all ages, across all sports. Um, all divisions so and even Riley you know beyond sports and I love how you bring up again we talked about it earlier but like reality as much as I would love to live in a fantasy world like the reality muscle mass density how we're built our height all these things right you know as much as people want to wash that away but even beyond athletics right I think even time named they're women of the year, a trans woman. And it's like, again, all these people, I don't know if it's like they, I say this all the time on my show. I don't know if they believe in this or they're trying to look cool or they're trying to be on this woke brigade, whatever it is. But it's like, again, (laughs) my and your experience from birth as biological women is not going to be the same as a biological man or even a trans woman or a trans man, right? And it just- makes me crazy because it's like what a slap in the face to women who have right. experienced and lived and fought as women and it's just like washing that all away and right. so here you go you know right i think especially in a sport like swimming that requires things like power and endurance and speed and you know all these different pieces women have breast tissue men do not right um and so in swimming, you know, your density, your buoyancy, that plays a huge role in it. And it's, that's not something I think a lot of people think, oh, well, Leah was on testosterone suppression. Okay. But that piece won't change. Um, the fact that men have, you know, larger lungs, which is super important in swimming will not change. A larger heart doesn't change with hormone suppression. Uh, I think men have a 40% larger throat, which sounds silly, but in swimming that plays a huge role in how much air you can, you know, get to your muscles. So all these little things that women do not have and will never have, it's it's crazy. It's insane that people are choosing to ignore. What do you think of the jokes that are like, they can't, you know, people can't win against the men, so they're gonna, you know, transition and then go beat all the women. I don't think that was Leah's intention. Again, kind of like the locker room situation. I don't think Leah's was like, oh, I'm just gonna grow out my hair and call myself a girl so I can win. I think there are more, I'm 
sympathetic in a way that I understand that Leah is probably going through some sort of mental, I'm, there's some things going on there to, you know, coerce you to completely transition. Um, but that it, that's how people view it is that, you know, this door has now been opened and people can see this as an opportunity to be like, oh, well, I could just transition and say that I'm a female and I would very easily win. And so it makes a mockery of women's sports, you know, to have someone say, which and this be true, that they could very easily beat all the women. Mm -hmm. It makes our sport, what we've dedicated our lives to, seem kind of just like a brush off your shoulder. Yeah. And that's so incredibly disrespectful. Yeah. It's And it's just disregarding of women and what they've sacrificed to get to where they're at. Listen, I, again, your story as you, you hit the nail on the head, I've dedicated my life to this. And while I don't listen, and that's the other thing too, which is a whole other ball of wax. I know we're rapping, but like, that's the other thing. I don't like the, which you don't have the women victim mentality that uh, funny enough, pop culture and woke Hollywood often have. Right. And there's a difference. Like there's a difference between dedicating your life to something, earning your spot, right? Working for that, that reward versus filling a quota. That's where I get annoyed right. with like the whole thing. Like right. no woman, no person wants to feel like they're filling a quota. Like that feels like shit. Right. That's, those are two totally different things. And that's why I don't like the whole victim mentality. Like women are owed something and your story is so not that. And that's why it resonated with me, with women on all sides of the aisle, as somebody who dedicates their life, has a passion has a drive and is relentless toward it. And then to feel like it's just, well, sorry. Um, it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. It, it's, right. it's so it's sad, you know, even your story about tying and you even say in your op-ed, it's like the 10th of a second or something like that, how it just came down to it. And it's like, Oh, sorry. The woman of the year and the trophy is just going to go to someone else. And right. so many women can resonate with that. Really? Well, I appreciate that a lot. Um, it's nice hearing because a lot of people will say, oh, you just wanted the trophy. I could care less about the trophy. I am not mm -hmm. sitting here putting myself in a position, you know, trying to get a pity party for myself because that is not what this is. Um, I am not someone who requires a pity party. I am very strong in my beliefs is what this is. And I am willing to speak out for other females. And so it means a lot to hear you say that because I never want to come across as this is me trying to gain something by doing this. I personally am not trying to gain anything. I'm not trying to make money. I am not trying to, you know, put myself out in this light. I never expected this to even really happen. And so that's not my goal. My goal is to advocate for a change to be made and to spread information that's true, that's real, that comes from someone who has personal experience. And lastly, for you, Riley, looking at all of this, like you put your op-ed out, you're getting a response. You were cool enough to come on Cancel Me Baby to talk about it. What is your view moving forward? Like, are there any parts, is there a part of you that just feels like defeated? Like all those years of work, what, like how am I in, how have, how have I had this passion and I'm in this, happen to be on earth in this climate, in this time where I just have like my ass handed to me basically, right? Like how do you look at it in hindsight, big picture? And the second point off that is, how do you see this moving forward with organizations like the NCAA, et cetera? So I'm an optimistic person. And so I'm not going to sit here and like pity or think back on what I could have done differently or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly, and this is unfortunate to say, but I do think in a sense, it was right place, right time in terms of the tie and how the scenario unfolded, because it's given me a platform. It's mm -hmm. given me a voice for a conversation that is so important. Um, I think if people like myself weren't speaking out, you know, people would think this is okay and that people want this and people are, you know, fine with moving in that direction, but that's not how the general public feels. They're just scared to talk about it. And so, mm -hmm. I'm looking at this as something that's positive, which is hard because it's overwhelming. Um, I have so much on my plate. It's a lot. I never anticipated to be here, like I said, doing this. Um, so it's interesting to be in my position. Um, I was actually set to go to dental school. I am, yeah, I'm hoping to pursue endodontics, which is like root canals. 
Um, but I decided I'm going to take a gap year. Uh, I just got married. I just bought five acres here in Nashville and I'm building a house. And so I figured with everything going on, I'll just defer dental school a year. So really this has thrown a wrench at my whole life. <laughs> it's just kind of been like, here, take this. Let's just put your life on hold for a minute. Um, which I'm still looking at in a good light. Um, but I think the trajectory of this, like you said, maybe it's because I'm in a position where I'm seeing more things, more stories that are happening, but I, I, I mean, it's happening in golf, it's happening in cycling, mm -hmm. it's happening in running and track, it's happening across all sports. And so I think it's only a matter of time before, you know, one national champion who's a transgender athlete in a female sport turns into three and five and 10 mm -hmm. and so on, if this isn't something that's handled. Um, but to also answer your question about how I think organizations will handle this, um, clearly the NCAA has done a terrible job. Um, not only did they allow this to happen, they were celebrating Thomas by you know, picking Thomas to be nominated for woman of the year, which I also got nominated for, um, which is a huge deal. It's the highest honor in all of female collegiate athletics, um, of the quarter million athletes, they only nominate about 500. So it's a very, very small percentage of people that they acknowledge. And so for Thomas to be one of the few women across the entire country, all sports, to be nominated for this, it is a slap in the face. And so the NCAA has done a terrible job handling it, which mm -hmm. makes me lose hope, um, especially with this new Title IX that's been put in place. Um, it's a scary time for sure. Well, on the flip side of that, two things. We are both here in Nashville. I would love to take you, you know, however you fancy a tea, a coffee, a drink. <laughs> I'm a grandma. So like coffee, it is for me, <laughs> but it is on me, Riley. And we awesome. at cancel me, baby, are glass half full type of people. And okay. I'll just leave it at this. Like, girl, you tied with, again, no matter what hormones, testosterone, this, that, Girl, you tied with a six foot what biological man? Uh, yeah. Mike, Mike, drop. Okay, Thank like serious skills that kills. And it's Thank like you. you are. You're right. You are like a in the right place at the right time, an icon in your own right. Even though it played out in a shitty way, that in and of itself, right? I mean, bravo well, because. Thank you. I would get squashed like a bug. So <laughs> I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. But yes, we'll have to meet up sometime. A hundred percent, Riley. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for what you do. And girl, we will chat more over of our course. coffee and tea. Of course. Thank you. Thank